notes on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, that I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive singing of the psalm as printed in your bulletin. Let the peoples praise you, O oh, oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O oh, oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad sing for joy. For a judgment begins to remedy the violations of all. Let the peoples praise you, O oh, oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let the people praise you, O oh, oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. be to God on high. And on earth peace and wills for men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. Lord God, every King, God the Father, all 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from Deuteronomy in the 8th chapter. Every commandment which I command you today you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord, your God, chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle reading is from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you have shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only." For even in Thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess our saving faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191.
Grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Our text this morning is from the Old Testament reading, verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. There ends a reading. Your fellow redeemed, it is sort of ironic that on a day like this when everyone in the country is going to be eating in excess, that the Old Testament lesson recalls a point in time when the people of God had very little to eat. In fact, food was one of the main complaints the children of Israel had against God during their 40 years in the wilderness. They complained that while they were slaves in Egypt, they ate a whole lot better than when they were free under God's care in the wilderness. Year after year, for 40 years, all they had to eat was manna. Now, I'm sure the first few days when they ate it, it was tasty and they liked it, but it just got to be too much. Day after day, year after year, just these fine white grains of manna. And God did send them quail at times, once in a while, for variety's sake and for meat, but not every day. Every day was manna. And it supported their life, it kept them healthy, it met their caloric intake needs, but it became absolutely loathsome to them. But believe it or not, that was part of what God intended. God wanted them to despair of their physical food because as a people, they were as hard-headed as they were hard-hearted. And they needed extreme measures to learn the lesson that God really wanted them to learn. It says in our lesson, He humbled you. He allowed you to hunger that He might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. God's words were the only real food they needed. It was a food that if they just ate regularly and believed it and trusted in God and followed his word, his word would bring them into everlasting life. And God gave them so many good words. He sent prophet after prophet to them to tell them about the Savior, who would come to take all their sins upon himself and die in their place to win eternal life for them. He spoke words of pardon and forgiveness to them over and over again as they did horrible things against him through those 40 years. He taught them about how he upholds all things for them, how he literally manipulated the laws of nature for them in order to save them from their enemies. For years upon year, God fed them with words of compassion and love and redemption. Never before in the history of mankind had God ever spoken such words of grace to his people. And if they just took those words in and lived in them and believed in that grace, he would see them through to everlasting life. But if they shunned his word and embraced the wicked ideas and thoughts of the world around them, then they would see eternal death. God needed his people to understand how vital his words of life were for them and what infinite gifts it gave them. As for their physical food, God would see to it that was taken care of eventually after they learned the lesson. He tells him in the reading today, the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water and fountains and springs, a land of wheat and barley and figs and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you eat bread without scarcity. God would take care of the physical side of things, but they needed, needed the spiritual gifts he gave through his word. Now there's much in this whole exchange between God and Israel that we in our day and age need. Because in point of fact, these Israelites were not that much different than us. 
And the problems they had with God are problems we see in ourselves at times. We too can be hard-headed and hard-hearted. We can be a sinful people who resist God's ways, even choosing to ignore his words because it just doesn't say the things we want it to say. We can be stubborn. We can be unyielding in our sin. So as a people who suffer from the same sins that Israel had, we need the same lesson that Israel learned. And God stresses to them and to us that man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. We need every word of God as much as they did. Which, of course, means we need even those words that might make us uncomfortable, that might expose things within us we don't want exposed. God's word presents us with laws to follow that we don't always want to follow or see the point of. We hear words of condemnation that at times seems to single us out and point a finger directly at us, make us squirm because it gets so personal. But even those words from God we need because they break down the, the walls we put up between us and God resisting him. They show us with such clarity how desperately we need a Savior to come into our lives and fix these things we can't fix on our own. So even God's words of law, even his words of condemnation, are words we need to receive with thanksgiving. Because they are a more important food for our souls than the meal we're going to eat this afternoon. And the good thing for us as Christians is we know very well that these words of law and condemnation are not the last words God will have with us. There are greater words, more important words that bring us life that we need. God speaks words of grace to us. Every time we come here, every time we confess our sins, God speaks his word of grace and he tells you your sins are forgiven. And in that word, your sins actually are forgiven. God's word every week points you to your Savior, Jesus, who did stand between you and the wrath of God and took that wrath in his own flesh so that you would never have to. God's words bring you Jesus who poured his life out in your place, spilled his blood in your place, died in disgrace in your place to restore you before the Heavenly Father to make your soul whole and safe forever. That word of God saves us from ourselves, from the influence of the world around us, from all evil and the devil himself. We need it. And here, God speaks it. In fact, in such a profound mystery, this word of God that brings life, that he speaks to us here every single week, is actually a word that became flesh and dwelt among us in the form of God's own Son. Jesus is himself the greatest, most defining word of God to us. And he comes to us. And he declares us to be redeemed and bought away from sin to be remade and restored as the people God wants. And it's not in ourselves. It's wholly in Him. And it brings us eternal life. We are sons and daughters of the Almighty because the Word of God manifest in Christ made us that way. So like the ancient Jews, we learn the lesson. We really do need to live every day by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father, including especially this word made flesh. With him, we can live without Thanksgiving Day feasts for the rest of our life and be completely full and complete in every way. So may our God give us faith today and every day to receive his word that proceeds from his mouth Receive it with thanksgiving, and may Christ, the Word incarnate, fill us with faith and grace. Amen.
Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for giving us every needful blessing, both for this life and that which is to come. It is your gracious providence that has preserved and sustained us all our lives to this day. In times of sickness, you sustained us. You mended our hearts when we were crushed with grief. You helped us endure our losses and forget what was unpleasant. In all the emergencies we faced, us, you were there to help us, and never once were we forsaken. And yet these are neither the sum total of your blessings nor even the most important. Far greater than these are your benefits you give our souls, the word of life that you have spoken to us through Christ Jesus our Savior. Through him our sins do find perfect forgiveness. May we never fail to see you as our merciful God and Savior. May you help us never to fail to acknowledge that all the blessings we have flow from you. Help us now overcome greed and selfishness inherent in our sinful natures so that we might better recognize the needs of others and learn to be generous in sharing with them of your manifold gifts. Lord God, we especially pray this day that you would be with those who are sick, those who are suffering and unable to be with us. We pray for Catherine Penning that you would strengthen her in her recovery after surgery, and that you would help her body fight her infection. Be with her and uphold her not only in body, but especially in faith, 
as she trusts in you, knowing you will provide everything she needs, body and soul. Accept our humble prayer for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.